Okay, welcome to those joining us remotely. We are doing potpourri <coughs> this morning. So, Zhu Feng, you want to start? Um, Pilometricoma. Pilometricoma, correct. So you have lots of shadow cells, very <coughs> little baseloid um, foci, little foci of baseloid in here. That's actually better so those online can see the whole field. Um, so any proportion of the baseloid cells and the shadow cells, calcium or bone, can work. So you see sort of buds, so you're, and distinctly, you don't have much stroma here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but basaloid follicular hematoma can even have a myxoid stroma. And this was a um, unilateral array of papules in a blastoid distribution present to the patient's entire life. So probably probably basaloid follicular hematoma. Pigment. And it doesn't really look like a blue knee of a skinny, so then I'm kind of in between melanoma and nevus. Um, so it doesn't look like it's symmetrical. Like junction. Um, yeah, it doesn't have that much at the junction. Yeah. Fairly symmetrical. Yeah, What's that? The junction is yeah. tips and sides. Yep. Now you have a sclerotic stroma down below, so and you have maybe some. Like nevus. Well, you also have dendritic melanocytes down below. Okay. So I was thinking more like combined. Okay. Like banal with a blue component in the dermis, giving rise to the sclerotic stroma. Okay. So what do you say dermatofibroma? Um, it's pretty acanthotic at the top. So you have so plate-like acanthosis overlying it. Name three tumors that give you acanthosis. Um, granular cell spits and dermatofibroma. So granular spits and dermatofibroma, and this one is fibrous, so DF would be a pretty good guess at scan. Well done. Basal cell. Basal cell. And how easily defined with a curette do you think this would be? Not very easily. Probably not very easily. Now, you go to the edges, there's infundibular cystic, mm -hmm. right? Um, but there are areas where it is micronodular and areas where it's infiltrative. And so in those areas where it's worming its way between collagen bundles, the curette just slides over and you can't really define the tumor margins very well prior to excision. Maybe on the leg, got a lot of background mixoid. So, why do you say leg? There's tufts of vessels. So, tufted or nodular angioplasia. Some There's lots there. of mixoid change. There's lots of hemosiderosis. So, what do you think this is? Stasis. Stasis. Very good. So, do you think the patient is that thick, or do you think there's something epithelial lined in the dermis? Yeah, there's something and the epithelium looks. 
cuboidal, columnar, stratified, where Those would you columnar. put it? Yeah, maybe. Maybe cuboidal. Yeah, I'd say probably <laughs> cuboidal, <laughs> which shockingly was the first choice, and yet you got it right. Good for you. And then at the edge of the cuboidal epithelium? Yeah, you have a little kind of snouting. Yeah, a little apocrine decapitation or snouting. So, what do you think? It's like, two lines. Hydrosis like a hydrocystic. And uh, you know they appear blue because of the lipofusion, and so the liquid that comes out of them when you stick them tends to be brownish. A very large vessel. Very large vessel. <coughs> Maybe like a temporal, temporal artery. Like a temporal <laughs> artery. And does <laughs> this one look like it has temporal arteritis? It really does. No. And that's pretty much normal temporal artery. <laughs> what must be present for <laughs> to call a temporal arteritis? Granulomatous inflammation. Yeah, you've got to have giant cells. If there's no no giant cell, there's no giant cell arteritis. Deep biopsy. <coughs> There's inflammation in the subcutaneous fat. Uh, can, can I see a uh, higher power? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> because the answer is at this power. So. Speaking as a septa. Yeah. Subcutaneous so fat. So, we're so it's septa at with a little granuloma yeah. and granulation so it's tissue. Erythema it's erythema nodosum. <laughs> see, you didn't need the higher power. <laughs> <laughs> you are absolutely correct. <laughs> And you get the easy button. Good for you. So mm. first off, where do you think you mucosa. are? Mucosa. Mucosa. Uh, mucosa. And it is a mucosal. Well done. Mm. So you're on a mucosal surface. You can see mm. that it's not a keratinizing mm. epithelium. There's also no dermis. There's a loose submucosa rather than a bundled dermis. And then you have palisading granuloma under that mucosa. That would typically be a mucosal. Hypercellular. <coughs> and what would you say your pattern is? Kind of storiform. Kind of storiform with alternating <coughs> skinny dark cells and paler like DFSP because like DFSP, it is that disc shaped nucleus viewed either on FOS <coughs> or on the side where it appears skinny in alternating planes of section with the fascicle and that's characteristic for DFSP. Um, What's the like difference a, between that tissue and this tissue? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so pale cell or clear mm -hmm. cell acanthoma, you expect it to have an inflammatory neutrophilic crust, neutrophils within the epithelium, abrupt cutoff between the glycogenated and normal epidermis. Okay. Acanthosis in the epidermis. Two are kind of slammed up against it, but I'm thinking, I mean, DF is in my differential right now. What do you think about Rings. the giant cells containing hemocytorin? I like it for DF. Yeah, wreath, wreath. lipidized wreath giant cells with hemocytorin, virtually pathognomonic for DF. Overlying acanthosis, also good. And collagen balls at the periphery, that's just gravy. Right. Very good. Say, say louder. Yeah. I think I heard it correct. LCV. Very good. So at scan, 
you see something happening at the level of the postcapillary venule, which sits right at junction of papillary and reticular dermis. And you see there's extravasation, so you know those vessels are unhappy. And so then you would just need to go to higher power to see that you have neutrophils with karyorectic debris and you have leukocytoplastic vasculitis. There was no endothelial necrosis. <coughs> it was postcapillary venial only. And so that's in a little five differential in this case. Um, clinically, there was gut pain and joint pain. And so it was HSP, in extra line. If those are big and small, then I would say AVM, but it sort of just looks like an angioma. Yeah, so like an angioma, but some are muscular mm -hmm. and some are thin-walled. So when you thick and thin, that's AV malformation. Some people call it AV hemangioma. But most are probably real traumatic AVMs. Let's do this one. It kind of looks like the other clear cell acanthoma because <laughs> it is a clear cell acanthoma. Very good. It looks like we have some patchy infiltrate. Um, patchy infiltrate? Kind of superficial and deep or superficial only? Pretty much superficial. is in the infiltrate. Oh, yes. Eosinophils. Um, um, and you certainly can get eosinophils in GA, but I don't see really good interstitial um, histiocytes. Also, what do you think about your wide open lumens for bug bite? I guess it's pretty good for it. Um, oh, no, no, it's oh, kind it of the anti bite, yeah. right? So you get right. endothelial swelling where you have no lumen in a mm -hmm. bug bite. Um, and it also tends to be superficial and deep, a little <coughs> wedge shaped. Mm -hmm. So, not so much for bite. What other things have just kind of sparse lymphoid and eos in the dermis? LCV could have EOS if it was like church stress, but I don't really see like Yeah, you don't cells. really see leukocytoclastic yeah. vasculitis. So urticaria mm -hmm. certainly can do that, but I don't see any neutrophils yeah. in the lumen, which you usually see in urticaria if you hunt for it. Um, urticarial drug eruptions, um, things in the dermal hypersensitivity response. Um, Would you think of like urticarial BP as well? Or? And uh, curiously enough, that's what this turned out to be, <laughs> was urticarial BP. So just good of you to bring that up. Mm -hmm. I don't particularly see eosinophils lining up at the dermal epidermal junction, which is usually your clue. Um, but this, in fact, turned out to be urticarial BP. Oops. Let's get oh. I'll Try to grab that without breaking the slide. Lipoma? Yeah, do lipomas have a thick fibrous capsule like that? Uh, like a capsulated fat necrosis? Yeah, and so so-called mobile encapsulated lipoma, which is localized fat necrosis. You can see the, the big globules where you've had necrosis of the fat and the surrounding fibr fibrosis. Usually taken out as a lump in the breast, um, but can happen other places as well. Looks like you have melanocytic proliferation riding pretty high up into the epidermis. So melanocytic proliferation with consumption of the epidermis. 
symmetry the, from side to side. Not really. And not so much. Lymphoid aggregates that are kind of walling it off. Lymphoid aggregates at the periphery, kind of walling it off, like riot police trying to hold back an angry mob. Involvement in the arches. If you remember, melanoma is your arch enemy. Um, confluent sheets of cells without good maturation. So even at scan, there's melanoma. Very good. SPAP, you have papillary structures and it opens to the surface so you can slide into it. And so the HPAP, which does not connect to the surface, so you can hide <laughs> in it. Okay. And we're in the south, so you say slide and hide. So acanthalytic dyskeratosis, so what's your differential? Um, you think of like Grover's or Woody D or Derrier's. So Grover's, Derrier's, um, Woody dyskeratoma <coughs> were a little larger and solitary. And this one by history was Grover's. It had the appropriate differential. Um, I see sort of a tumor here. Top looks a little warty. There's hyperkeratosis. And the tumor distinctly palisades has kind of a pink rim peripheral to the palisade. So triculomoma, and then the center is a little spiky where there's been a folliculitis, so that's so-called desmoplastic triculomoma. They're tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what made it look a little like pyelomyoma <laughs> is the fact that it <coughs> has pointy pinwheel-like edges, um, but it's loose, uniform, mixoid with wavy neurod cells and mast cells that are round, so it is neurofibroma, correct. A little unusual outline for a neurofibroma. Okay, bloody tumor. Angioma, and what's going on? Smooth muscle. No, what takes up all that stain? Fibrin. Fibrin. So those are clots, and then what's happening here? Where you've got Just a, uh, oh. recanalizing. Yeah, recanalizing. So sort of on its way to intravascular papillary endothelial hyperplasia, you see the little papillary structures starting to form. So very common in an angioma that's turned dark and enlarged. So it may just be sight, and then is there something going on here? Yes. Well answered. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Some people would have said no, so that's good. It looks like there's almost falling a collagen, um, some lymphs in there, maybe and a little granulomatous like DPA. Is it focal? Or is it top to bottom, side to side? Well. So is it up here? It's all the way at the top, towards the bottom. Yeah, so it's focal. Yeah. Does that go well with GA, being focal and patchy? Yeah. Yeah. 
NLD is <coughs> top to bottom, side to side, and GA is focal and patchy. So that's actually very good for that. Black pigment probably get exogenous. So exogenous. Yeah, there's some forward body granulomatous component. Yeah. Sure. Forward so body granuloma. Like forward body or tattoo granuloma, traumatic tattoo. <coughs> if you um, polarize it, you'd probably find some silica in it. So trichulomoma, and when you have multiple trichulomoma things, hanging like garlands from the surface that um, you know, sometimes gets called tumor of the follicular infundibulum. So I heard spiradenoma. Why spiradenoma? Um, yeah, jet black. So it's a ball, a blue ball composed of pale nuclei with darker nuclei at the periphery and then peppered with jet black lymphocytes. So very good for a spiratinoma at scan. Welcome to my life in the lab. <laughs> Pureted stuff, I think. Pureted stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So someone took a curette and then kind of, you know, swished it around in the formalin and sent it into the office. So what is this? Um, There's a little peripheral palisade there. And so that was both an unknown and sort of a plea. <laughs> You know, be be kind to your. <laughs> uh, we have a large nodule in the dermis. And where um, do you think we are? Looks like we are somewhere in the mouth. Yeah, you've got minor salivary gland, mm -hmm. right? And this is keratinized. You actually have a little dermis. It looks like keratinizing mucosa on mm -hmm. the surface, though. So you're probably like right at the vermilion. Mm -hmm. Kind of intensely staining, mm -hmm. um, lots of little cracks all through it, with little papillary intensely staining areas. Um, I mean, I don't think it's an angiosarcoma. Agree, it would be a little ball-like yeah. angiosarcoma on a lid, <laughs> um, all filled with fibrin, yeah. so more likely it's Well, I'm with sure. fibrin and uh, and then intravascular papillary endothelial hyperplasia, so some oh. clot and Masson's change. What would be on a lip, kind of a big solitary space like that? You're used to seeing it collapsed, like a venous lake, like a venous lake. Oh. and then when there's a clot in it, it can't collapse. Oh. Right, okay. so you always see it when the bloods come out of it after the biopsy. Okay. So it's always a collapsed space, except when it's clotted, and then it's going to be a wide open space. Okay. So, clotted venous lake, thrombosed venous lake with vasculopapillary <coughs> endothelial hyperplasia. Cell tumor. And what's over here? PEH. So PEH? Do, do you have normal epithelium there? No, it looks like there's some atypical cells. Yeah, it's so, like cell. um, so this is Merkel, and that's Bowen's, mm -hmm. and the two happen very commonly together. So Merkel in the background of Bowen's is very common. Um, and you have blue cell tumor, and you have high mitotic rate, and you have a 
distinctly like branching walls similar to trabecular bones, so the so-called trabecular pattern, which is typical for Merkel. You, you'd still do stains, but when you see that kind of trabecular pattern, it's um, it's actually pretty good, you know, pretty high specificity for Merkel. Looks like you have a lot of neutrophils, maybe some pieces parts. So. LCV. Neutrophils and karyorectic debris, so LCV. This is someone who presents with bruising hives that last longer than 24 hours. Do you have a C1Q on the urticariovasculitis? So it's, you know, urticariovasculitis, and what do most patients with urticariovasculitis turn out to have? Lupus. Lupus. Correct. Tell me about the um, cyst wall. So it has structure. Okay, structures. Dermoid. Dermoid, and this is from the lateral eyebrow. What imaging are you going to do prior to the surgery? I, don't have to do any I lied. It's from the medial eyebrow. <laughs> what imaging are you going to do? Um, MRI, CT. Yeah, ta talk to your radiologist. CT is better for bone. Mm -hmm. So often it's still bone windows with a CT scan, but it's a good, you know, that's probably worth a call to your radiologist to see how, how you want to approach it. This is another dermoid cyst with the adnexal structures a little more prominent. Usually lamellar keratin in a we have a tumor. It's, it's like it's a lot of mucin around it. Um, I was thinking at first time mucin is carcinoma, but it's a little more cellular than some that I've seen. Yeah, it's a little. Pink. Uh, I mean, it certainly glomus. resembles mucinous carcinoma. Yeah, they look more like glomus cells. They look like more that. like glomus cells, so and at the periphery, some of them form little chains, and they form a round vascular lumen, and that is, in fact, kind of a mixoid <laughs> glomus tumor. Very good. Pigment in the basal layer. Is it well nested or not very well nested? Poorly nested, effacement of the reti. Poorly nested, effacement of the reti. And then down below in the erector pili, you have some very bland looking nevus cells. And there are nevus cells here as well. So recurrent nevus. So sharply circumscribed confluent melanocytic proliferation, scar underneath, residual nevus below that. So so-called pseudomelanoma. is a little bit of alteration of the collagen. Blue nevus should have an altered sclerotic stroma that's different from the dermis. If there's no altered stroma, then you have to consider either epithelioid blue of carnies or dendritic type melanoma, um, uveal type melanoma of skin. This one has altered collagen, which is good just for blue nevus. Mm. 
section there. What kind of cells here? They look uh, some kind of granular cell, maybe. Granular? Or, some, uh, foamy. or maybe foamy. And is it in a discrete mass, or is it kind of spread in a loose band-like fashion? Uh, spread out. And skin with very delicate, small adnexal structures, and striated muscle pretty high. A xanthoma. Or a like a xanthoma that's kind of band-like on skin with very delicate structures and striated muscle kind of high. Uh -huh. like Xanthalasma on a lid. Get that out. The cysty structure looks like it does connect to the top. Cysty structure connects to the top. And then a bunch of sebaceous. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, is it simply sebaceous hyperplasia? Sebaceous hyperplasia mm -hmm. would usually be a, a single. Right. This is like a big cystic infundibulum. Like a dilated pore. Um, well, do you know any follicular sebaceous cystic hematomas? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, follicular sebaceous cystic hematoma. Probably a PEN has the like, crack like spaces. It has the cleft like spaces of a palisaded encapsulated neuroma. You are correct. Well done. This was taken from the midline of the neck. You all want to jump in? Like thyroid? Thyroglossal. So that's thyroid, tissue, cyst, midline of neck. Um, Going lateral to medial, branchial cleft, bronchogenic, thyroglossal. Um, there's also cartilage there, which can occur in association or when it's in isolation, that's a waddle. <laughs> so humans can have waddles. Side, if it's a lichenoid or if those were uh, an acid lichenoid side. So, which way do you want to go? Yeah, lichenoid. Lichenoid. Yeah. Sawtooth 3D, dead reds, so, lymphoid infiltrate, pigment incontinence. It'd be okay based on how it looks or if it's just a complete lichenoid. So, don't really see any parakeratosis, so it could be like a planus. Don't see EOs, don't see para. Para suggests something other than like a planus. EOs lead you towards like an drug, um, but still could be benign like an keratosis, could be acral hypertrophic lupus. It's not really broad enough to suspect like an regression of melanoma, but all of those things should be considered. Glands yeah, kind of big sebaceous glands, and then what's going on here? It's not 
kind of like bundles of collagen. Yeah. So what would give you big prominent sebaceous glands overlying some little subtle bundles of collagen like that? Like DF. Yeah, exactly. And then if you look over here, there's the rest of the DF. But that's the edge of a <laughs> fibroma, and you picked up on the collagen balls and the sebaceous induction. Well done. I tried to fool you, but was not to be. Keratin, mm -hmm. but more there than here. Mm -hmm. And then tell me about these nuclei compared to those nuclei. They're larger. They're larger. What do you call a large <laughs> cell acanthoma? Let me think. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> a good response. Okay, very good. Proliferating pilar rolls and scrolls. Very good. That was easy. Well <laughs> done. <coughs> so, you know, either just a big fatty tag or nevus lipomatosis, depending on the clinical presentation. That one might be a little too faded to read. Let's skip that one in favor of something else. So does that scare you? Yes. Or can you get it? <laughs> <laughs> That's an honest answer. But you pull back and you said there's plate like acanthosis, there's lacy infiltration in the fat, there's collagen trapping. Can you get big histiocytic monster cells like that in the GF? Yeah, exactly. So it's still a DF. That's why you don't go past games. <laughs> <laughs> there are people who say, and I mean, you're you're basically right that if you you look too high power, you can scare yourself. You pull back; it's still a dermatofibroma. Small punch here. Um, superficial inflammation. I'm thinking lupus at first, kind of vertically oriented. And yeah, a little superficial indeed, vertically oriented. Yeah. Still thinking lupus. Oh, am I missing something? Escape bees. Yeah. <laughs> that is a cavity with poop. <laughs> and then down below, do you see any lumen? No. Not so much, yes. right? And you've got a polymorphous and infiltrate. So you have a bite-like reaction or arthropod-like reaction and then a cavity in the, <laughs> in the big poop-filled yeah, cavity. Yeah, I still think we can still do that. Yeah, I still think we can still do that. I think we can still do that. The melanocytes, and then what are all those dark cells forming a band through it? So the gray like cells are melanocytes. Uh, it's inflamed, and um, in the, the 
Halo Nevis. A Halo Nevis, very good. So when it's a band that goes straight through the lesion and it all mixes together, that's a Halo Nevis. So busy dermis differential. So there's no particular acanthosis. You have interstitial histiocytes. It's patchy. So granulomanulari is a pretty good guess. Well done. what's left of the epidermis. Red blood cells. What kind of giant cells are these with the scalloped? Two times. Well, scallop border like that. Uh, Random nuclei. Uh, osteoclast-like. So you have osteoclast giant cells slammed up against the epidermis. So it's kind of a metaplastic change, probably in a spindle cell tumor. AFX. AFX. Mm -hmm. Atypical fibrous anthelma with, with osteoclastic change. Um, I wonder if it's just a sub. I don't it see why. It is. <laughs> sub still exists. <laughs> <laughs> Even at <conference>. Well done. Shave. It's a It seems pretty small in circumscribed. It sounds like the nests. Well, the nests are pretty big and irregularly spaced. Yeah, so you're seeing conflicting criteria, <laughs> yeah. right? The, it's relatively small, relatively well circumscribed. Are there any non-nested areas or yes. poorly nested areas? And where do they exist? The At the arches. tips or in the arches? In the arches. And then you got pagetoid scatter and weird shaped nests. <laughs> could, could be no evidence. Yeah, exactly. So you probably want to get some deeper sections, look a little closer, but worrisome for the whole moment. Okay. Okay. I have a rush from last week. I was going to see if you could oh. I think you saw it. I was just oh, going to okay. show you yeah, where we're <coughs> at the end. Yeah, we should definitely not be recording when we. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I think I heard trichelomoma palisaded at the periphery, pale cells hanging down from the epidermis, hypergranulosis, is a little warty on the surface, and a nice prominent basement membrane zone. So trichelomoma tend to be warty, tend to be peripheral face towards the ears, warty ears, and associated with cowlings. Digital mixoid cyst, looks like acral skin, mixoid focus in the dermis. Kind of like a cystic like area, but then the rest of it kind of looks like a basal cell. That's yeah, pink. so lots of pink strands, lots yeah. of horn cysts. So this is. Infundibular cystic BCC that's predominantly pink, but you nailed the diagnosis very, very good. Um, lots of fat. Um, kind of encapsulated yeah. fat. Lots of little thrombos, capillary sized vessels. Yeah, probably calcified. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> so a a lump, encapsulated lump of fat. I feel like a traumatic um, 
Well, it's not really a thick fibrous, and you have lots of vascular that's part of it. Then you get her off. Yeah. Like. <laughs> just like Angie. Yeah, like Angie. Oh. <laughs> Very good. It was probably my description <laughs> rather than the slide <laughs> leading you astray. I think so. Some lactatic vessels. Elastosis. Lots of elastosis. You think this is a very young person? Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> probably a very old, sun damaged person. Angiosarc. Angiosarcoma, lots of mm -hmm. crack-like spaces in the dermis, angiosarcoma, old sun-damaged skin. Another melanoma? Hmm? Another melanoma? Why melanoma? Um, pretty much confluence all the way along. Confluence involves the arches, pagetoids scattered, nests that are irregular in size and shape, cells that don't disperse or mature in the dermis. I would agree with melanoma. Cuffs of very intense staining stuff around the vessels. Fibrin. Fibrin. So, how likely is it that that's a lymphoid infiltrate when you go higher? If or there are big fibrin cuffs in the vessel. Or neutrophilic. Probably neutrophilic. And is it superficial or is it superficial and deep? Superficial and deep. And so, give me a differential. LCD, like the big five. Like big five, which includes? Um, I think the, the, the so ANCA, um, associated vasculitis, septic, septic, and rheumatoid. Mm -hmm. Yep, well done. Kind of interstitial, almost looking. Interstitial, and this looks like a worm under the skin on the flank. Mm -hmm. So like GA. Maybe? Yeah. What kind of GA has a rope mm -hmm. sign down your flank? Uh, IgD. IgD. Yeah. Interstitial granulomatous dermatitis. Encapsulated, and you have a crescent like zone of subcapsular edema. You can make it out a little bit there, crescent like zone of subcapsular edema in a round ball. The schwannoma. <coughs> so it's, it's all scan diagnosis. Staining gray, so that's good for tinea versicolor. And you see ZD and meatballs. Looks like it's something pedunculated, right? Loose, uniform, mixoid. <coughs> Capsite neuroma. 
So it doesn't have the clefts and fascicles. This is more uniform, loose, mixoid, pale, grayish pink, like a neurofibroma, pedunculated NF. So I look for NF or something melanocytic, but that's not at all what you're seeing. Yeah. Seeing um, is that's just few the EOs, EOs limbs. limbs, and then within the lumen some neutrophils. So it could be just bacteria. That's exactly what it is. So Durable hypersensitivity response and then neutrophils within the lumen. Tumor looks like kind of matrical differentiation. But you also have sebaceous uh, uh, at first. It means like you got hair shafts. Yeah, like pan folliculoma. Um, trichofolliculoma in a weird plane of section or just a dermoid that's kind of again cut in a weird plane of section where you're at the edge and cutting multiple planes through the cyst. A bump with Perifollicular and perivascular fibrosis, concentric angiofibroma, and when solitary fibrous papule of the nose. So, very good. Do you see the coronoid lamella there and there? We have a clear cell angiofibroma in the console. Oh, good. This afternoon. Excellent. I don't think I ever saw a clear, clear cell in fiber cells. Kind of funny looking. And you, you, you it definitely will we'll see that. You know, lots of variants of fibrous papule. Okay, how about that? Infundibulocystic BCC. Okay, how about this? So there is some acanthosis, and there are some big collagen balls. Um, it's definitely running in long fascicles, which is a little not DF-like. Mm -hmm. Very high mitotic rate, some atypical mitoses. So yeah, I'd still I'd. It looks superficially like a dermatofibroma, <laughs> but I might pursue this one with immunostains. Make sure it's not a slam type of malignant tumor. Uh, so, um, deep penetrating nevus? Like a blue. deep penetrating nevus or blue. It has its own sclerotic stroma. So let's look at the nuclei. Judging by the nuclei, which are smaller, kind of hyperchromatic, inconspicuous, nucleoli, smudgy <coughs> chromatin. That's pretty good for a DPN. Mm -hmm. So it's the nuclei that help define them. Small, hyperchromatic, inconspicuous nucleoli, whereas the cellular blue has very prominent nucleoli. And um, and the chromatin pattern's a little, little smudgy in them. And then you can always look for beta catenin if there's a, if there's a question. I think we are almost there. So the beta catenin one is can differentiate DPN from blue. Okay. Um, correct. Beta catenin mutation is not seen typically in blue net nevi. It's seen in um, deep penetrating nevus. It yeah, looks sebaceous from scan, but it's kind of deep. Yeah, it looks sebaceous. A little bit deep. So a little deeper than where you'd 
expect a follicular um, sebaceous cystic hematoma. Um, it's a little bit well differentiated, but it does have some red ducts in it. Blue ball with red ducts, you think sebacioma. Um, this one is maybe somewhere between sebacioma and sebaceous adenoma, and you might want to look for miratory clinically in the patient. Symmetrical, largely tips and sides, ends in a nest. Problem with this. And with that, we will stop. And you guys did um, close to 100 slides. That's about the pace we want. Can we show that one real quick? Yeah. We're Once we get out of Let us stop recording. <coughs>